Hey, your home bakers, it's Jack here at bakewithjack.co.uk, bringing you your weekly bread making tip every single Thursday. And today, I'm going to talk about the size of your ears. Hello and welcome back to another weekly bread tip. We do this every single Thursday and if you're new here, I have a chat about a lot of things and every once in a while there's a little practical video as well to help you out. So consider pressing that subscribe button if you fancy. Now, listen, uh, obviously in the beginning, I wasn't talking about the size of your ears. I'm talking about the size of an ear on a loaf of bread. And this is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about when I say ear. It's this lovely bit that opens up, okay? That lovely bit there, and it's quite tricky to achieve, right? But it can be done in your oven at home. This one was done in my oven at home. Sometimes it happens and sometimes it doesn't. And let's get down to the six factors that contribute to that happening. And the first thing I want to talk about is tension. Now, you'll know, if you know me, if you're familiar with me and what I do here, you'll know I talk a lot about building tension. And you can see more about it. There's a couple more videos. One is called something like how to stop your loaf from spreading out flat. And the other one's how to shape a loaf of bread. But the thing about tension, you've got to build that tension across the top of the loaf. Across the top of the loaf, make it really nice and tight when you're shaping technique. And you can build tension when you shape it the first time. And you can let it rest an hour and build some more tension let it rust up again and that's a really cool thing to do because you're just building more and more tension that makes it nice and tight across the top and when you slash it it opens out on the top really beautifully but that's not the only thing the second factor is catching it just the right time of it's proving up if it's slightly overproved, although it's still holding its shape it's getting a little bit delicate it's going to lack that real push in the oven we're talking about oven spring i talked about last week it's that puff it's that big puff up like that that goes when you go into the oven uh, and it's got to have just the right amount of tension for that to happen that means perhaps bake it slightly earlier than you would do your standard loaf in a tin. So it retains a little bit of that bounce and a little bit of that tension inside and a little bit of that force when it goes into the oven to create that big massive burst on top. Factor number three is, what are you slicing it with? What are you slashing or scoring the top of your dough with? Is it a knife? Is it a serrated knife? Is it a sharp knife? Or is it one of these little chappies? This is a green yet. And I've spoken about this before, but it's super duper sharp. You've got to have something really sharp. And a lot of recipes will say, slash it with a razor or a sharp knife, right? To make it easy for people who don't have one of these, to make it accessible and that's okay. But your sharp knife has really got to be as sharp as a razor blade. It's got to be properly, properly sharp. Your, your cook's knife that you're using at home and stuff like that is probably not going to do the job as well. This creates a real swift, sharp, super razor sharp slice in the top. And that's what you need as well. And then, once you have one of these, factor number four is your slashing technique. Now, to get this to open up nicely, if you see where I sliced it in the loaf, I didn't, it opened up almost to the middle, but I only slashed it to here, right? Which is just a little bit on the diagonal of that dome in the first place. And when I slashed it, I went in at a shallow angle like this, okay? Like that. I didn't slash it like that. A real shallow angle like a spoon like I'm scooping out with a spoon like this and that creates a little bit of a almost like a flap over and that's the bit that opens up and turns into that massive ear factor number five is also something to do with oven spring you want maximum oven spring when you go into the oven and the best way to achieve that is to bake on top of something hot your dough gets straight onto something hot hits that heat and conducts that heat straight away maximum oven spring that thing that is hot inside of your oven can be a baking stone you may have seen a pizza stone in the past or a rectangular baking stone that goes into the oven i've got a big lump of granite sitting into my oven that i put all my dough directly onto i slide it directly onto that hot piece of granite and get maximum oven spring you may have seen a dutch oven technique which we'll talk about in the future as well dutch oven is a big uh, big massive cast iron pan essentially a deep one with a lid and you heat it up in the oven real nice pop your dough inside and it comes up really really nice so bake on something hot
The final factor that contributes to that beautiful ear is steam. Now I've spoken about steam before as well. Steam gives your dough time to open up because it makes everything softer for longer. For example, when, you are, when your loaf goes into the oven, it sets its shape on the outside and then it stops growing any further. With the steam, it will keep opening, 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 opening up uh, more and more and more, the more steam you can get into your oven. So there you have it. That's why that question is not so easy to answer. At the end of a class, when somebody says to me, hey, how come yours has come up? You've got a nice ear on top of yours like this, and mine has not happened yet. It's down to those six things. The first thing is your shaping technique and building that tension across the top. The second thing is catching it at just the right point before you put it into the oven. The third thing is what you're slashing your dough with. Make sure you've got some sort of grin yet, something super, super duper sharp. Number four was slashing technique. Nice, shallow angle, nice and swiftly. Number five, we're number five. <laughs> number five is baking it on something hot, hot stone Dutch oven, something like that. And number six is steam. Create a nice steamy environment. That's why it's not so easy to achieve. And once you get it at home, that's a wicked moment. And you feel free to have a little happy dance around your kitchen when that happens. Because when it does happen, it's awesome. And once you get that inside of your head, what you're waiting for, what you're looking for, at what point you want to slash it and where and when, you will have it down to a T over and over again. And it's such a good moment. When that ear pops up, celebrate because you deserve it, yeah? And that's it. Hey, thank you so much for watching this video. I try and do this every single week just to bring you some little bit of advice that might help you out on your quest to make an amazing bread at home. Uh, if you like this video, if it helps you out, please click like and share it out. That would be amazing. And if you want to come and bake with me in person, or if you think that might be a nice gift for somebody, I'm here in Surrey in the south of England. Come and say, hey, come and bake some bread with me. And the link is underneath if you're on YouTube or have a look around the website if that's where you are. See you next week.